guys so I made a bunch of changes to my audio video setup here in the basement and I mean a bunch of changes first off I moved some of the components around and second off I added a few new features and if for those of you who haven't seen on Facebook that I did get a new tape deck which is really nice I love this is the Sony TC W E 475 that's really nice but um, right now I'm going to give a little quick demo. Also, you notice the subwoofer is missing. A bunch of wires there though instead. But I've actually relocated the subwoofer to the back. That, not that. That's an old server. That's a TiVo box. But the subwoofer is right there. Here. Let me get my spotlight. Hold on. There's the subwoofer right there. Same subwoofer. I just got a long ass wire that runs around the room for it now, which is nice. Also, the Harmony Hub... For the basement is now mounted up there which is really nice because now it doesn't have to reach around corners or walls to try and hit all the TV components and I can be sitting in my chair here and I can get I could control everything and I also moved the echo dot to right there on the shelf right on top of the fire TV the satellite radio box has been moved to on top of the Apple TV which is right there the Apple TV third gen and the antenna for the satellite radio box still goes out the window. You can't see it here though, but it, it goes out behind this curtain and up onto the back deck, which gets pretty good reception out there. But then there's my old Logitech Harmony remote, which kind of sort of works. Sometimes, I mean, the battery's crap, and I don't want to buy a replacement battery since I already have the Harmony hub. But the main thing I did is, is I moved the components that are all audio based onto the left and the ones that are video based onto the right. And that gave me room here in the center, which is where I used to have everything. Now in the center, I've got all the switch box controls. And so I don't have to go around and reach my hand around the back to mess with the controls. So let me give a quick overview of this. My stereo is the Jamo DMR60. It's a 5.1 surround stereo. And um, one thing about that is that it has a TV input and an AUX input. Those are the only um, composite audio input, the red and whites. Uh, besides that, it's got optical and um, coax audio, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because I'll tell you that in a minute. So the, a the TV input comes right from the TV by default. The AUX input, since I've got so many audio components here, I had to do something about that. So into the AUX input directly, I've wired this. Um, you can't buy this anymore, I don't think, unless you find it on eBay or something. But So I bought it back when Radio Shack was still good. Um, this is a Radio Shack audio video edit selector. So basically this has three inputs. And what it does is, it has, is the, the output of it goes to the AUX port. And then input one and input two. Input one comes from this tape deck here. Input two comes from the record player. The record player does need a new needle. So I can't play any records on it right now because the needle finally broke after, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years of use. And there's another port on the back that says the record A. So what that does is it feeds the, um, the um, record in on the tape deck, which is really nice. So that way I can do a variety of different things recorded to cassette, which is really nice. This input C in the front goes to this Radio Shack switch box. Again, I bought this from Radio Shack. It was still good. I highly doubt you could find it there anymore. But I'm um, the first input on that. So all four of these inputs wire into C. So that's in series with input C there. So there's that. Um, the first input, the labels are somewhat correct. I only have one label on there right now. I'm going to get it looking better. But it says 2XM TR. But that's the satellite radio box, which is actually a car satellite radio box that I have. There's a um, car outlet right there. I plug it into, into a inverter there. And there, that brings the power to that. And the second input feeds from the Echo Dot, which also the Echo Dot feeds my pair of computer speakers, which is right there, and there's another one over there, and the one under the desk, the sub. And the third input actually feeds from this little aux cord right here. And I have the 30-pin um, Apple charging cable there as well because sometimes I bring my iPod Touch down here and I want to play that on the stereo, so I have a charging cable and an audio cable for it, which is hanging right there. And the fourth input 
feeds from the audio output of the stereo. So what happens then is if I'm playing like a CD or if I'm recording something, or if I'm playing something on the TV or something like that, anything the stereo is playing can be put into there and back into the stereo. And the reason I do that is not to create feedback, but it's to actually be able to record any source of audio onto a cassette. And that's pretty cool there. Now, the one thing that was most challenging is the way the stereo is set up and how to hook it in with Harmony properly. Because I like all my stuff to be smart. So um, the main problem I had is that on the original remote for the stereo, there are four buttons, each with two different functions. So let me see if I can find the original remote for the stereo. I think it's right here. Yeah, this is it. So let me put the light down for a second. So um, if you look at the remote for the stereo here, you've got one that says DVD USB, another that says FM AM, coax and optical, and TV and AUX. So if you press it the first time, it's going to go to TV. The second time you press it, it's going to go to AUX. Now see, that's not Harmony. Does, Harmony does not know how to operate with that properly. So the way it's configured is that there's a one button that scrolls through the inputs, or is a button for each individual input. So basically, I set it up custom. What I did is I, as I told it to never change the stereo input, but individual activities, I double programmed the buttons. I set them up as custom buttons. So that way, when it wants to go to AUX, it'll just press TV twice on the remote. It'll fire that command from the Harmony Hub. So it's pretty interesting how it works. The Apple TV I've got wired in through, um, co uh, through optical audio, which is really nice. I like having that. And I have an HDMI to my TV. And the, um, the DVD, this is actually a DVD recorder. I also bought this from Radio Shack when they were still good. But um, this DVD recorder is wired in through a component video and through coaxial audio. So that's pretty much the top of the line standard there for that because that is, these things were bought before HDMI existed. I always leave the satellite radio on because I don't because the Harmony Hub has a it's a crazy limitation of only being able to control eight devices. So I just leave it on and I leave it on Hip Hop Nation. You know, if I want to change it, I'll get up and move it up and down. It does, it can control that, but I don't have enough space on the on the number of devices I've got because we already have. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, Fire TV, Apple TV, six and seven, and this PC over Bluetooth, which is really customized. I like that. I bought this thing maybe for about ninety nine dollars back in two thousand five. Came with Windows XP and 512 megs of RAM. Since then it's gone under uh, optical drive upgrade. It came with originally only a CD drive and there was a floppy drive here. Pull that floppy drive out since who uses floppies today? But I put in a Blu-ray drive and a DVD RW drive and I put in about three and a half gigs of RAM since that's all it will take since it's old. And I put in a new video card too which is really nice. It actually allows Windows Arrow to work on Windows 7, which is what I chose to go with on there. I had 10 on here at one point in time, but it is super sluggish with 10, so I backed it down to 7. But um, anyway, let's just show you how some of this works here, so let's go. Let's do this. Alexa, turn on cassette basement. Okay. Now I'll say turn on cassette basement because of the fact that I don't want to program different switches for the echo. So cassette eight basement basically just means auxiliary input. Which right now I have defaulted to cassette. And you know what? What the heck? Why not? For nostalgia's sakes. I don't know what's on this. Let's tune this pitch up a little bit. I like that better. Right there. It's in 5.1 Dolby too, which is nice. Three speakers there. Listen to this subwoofer kick when it comes in. Oh, that's 
crazy. Let's stop that before we get a copyright claim. So I'll pull that tape out of there. So yeah, I wanted to stop that before we got a copyright claim from YouTube. So anyway, that's there. Now let's take this and move it to input C. Now you see the satellite radio is coming in. Let's cut that off before we get a copyright claim as well. And you'll see that I've got this input here, which goes to the echo, which since the echo is already going there, it gets kind of ridiculous because then I've got not only the 5.1 speakers here, but I've also got the 2.1 speakers for this computer setup. Alexa, play time for that by, okay. Alexa, play time for that by Kevin Gates. Time for that by Kevin Gates. There you go. Now this gets insane with the sound, so I gotta be really careful with this. Because not only is it coming through the stereo, but it's also coming through my computer speakers. Do you think I ever need you love more Turn it down a little bit. Me. Show me your true colors, girl. I just wanna see. Cause I didn't name too many. Come around and change on me. She's screaming, please don't waste my time. I say I wanna hear this bass real quick. Alexa, stop. Again, trying to avoid a copyright claim. You know, not all the music in the world is free, so we got to respect that. Um, besides that, it controls everything perfectly with the TV and everything. So let's turn this off first. Now, I always have a habit of turning everything off before I start a new activity, so it doesn't get out of sync or something weird like that. Alexa, turn off Basement Harmony Hub. Or I gotta wait before I actually talk to her. Alexa, turn off Basement Harmony Hub. Okay. This, you can't have it turn off the tape deck. You gotta actually hit the power button there. Now, I was actually thinking about maybe wiring some kind of a Wemo switch in that would actually um, plug in the, the tape deck, the record player, and the satellite radio box. So that way I could just say turn off basement auxiliary or something and it would just kill the power to those three since there's no clocks on them so why would we need to do that anyway that might be an option future date maybe but um alexa turn on vcr basement okay it's kind of blurry but then focus in here It's already there. And I'll just play this for a second. It's the um, Justin Timberlake Future Sex Love Show I taped off of HBO a very long time ago. The tracking's really bad on it. Stop the tape. Alexa, turn off Basement Harmony Hub. Okay. Alexa, turn on DVD Basement. Okay. Now see, that's my mistake. You've got to wait a few seconds when you turn the, when you turn the system down, with, if it involves the TV, before you turn it back on, or else the TV ignores the power on command. That's just because my TV's old, so I'm probably going to have to resynchronize this again because it probably got out of sync. Let's see. Nope. I think I caught it just in time. So that actually worked out a little bit, which is good. I don't have a disc in here, but theoretically speaking, if I could find a disc quickly, I don't know what this is. I'm not going to put that in. Have it be something that I don't want to play on TV. But um, theoretically, if I had a disc in here, you'll see the eject symbols and everything right there in the corner. So you know that that works, right? But yeah, that's a DVD burner as well as a DVD player, so I can record stuff now. I've got the input hooked up. There's one input I've got hooked up on it, and it comes from the PC. 
the PC goes to the TV using a VGA cord and an audio cord, but also I have it outputting using um, S-Video to that. So I want to see how that's going to work. But that's actually on the wrong input to even receive that. And I might have to reconfigure that as well so that way it works. Let's go ahead and do that really quick while I'm standing here thinking about it. Select video. It already is on S-Video, so it's probably a setting on the PC I've got to change. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I've got going on down here, which is really nice. So, yeah, thanks guys for watching. And just let me know what you think about it. I don't know why I'm so close, but anyway, let me step back a few feet here. But yeah, that's the whole system right there. And also, Alexa, turn off basement desk one. Oh, come on. Alexa, turn off basement desk one. Okay. And that's over my computer area. Right there, you see my giant four screen setup. That's for a different video, though. Alexa, turn on basement desk two. Okay. That's for the. That's where my. That's where the other desk is. Alexa, turn on basement desk one. Okay. Like I said, guys, thanks for watching and everything. And just let me know what you guys think. All right, peace.